Welcome to Voices with Dementia, an encore session on where are they now? I am talking with Mick Carmody in Brisbane, Australia. And we interviewed him for our Voices with Dementia column in March of 2017. And I have the pleasure of talking with him today. He is living now in an assisted living or nursing care home. And so you're going to see him here wearing a helmet. And uh, I'll start out now, Mick, by asking you, why is it that you're now wearing this helmet? Brenda, I, as part of FTD uh, that I have, I, I have seizures, which uh, they're similar to epileptic seizures, but they're generated from the back of the frontal lobe. They can't be picked up by any scans. Now, what I was having was drop seizures. They were tonic, clonic seizures, and I would. Um, it would be triggered by light, by noise, by door slamming and so on. And I'd stand up and I'd shake my arms like I was beating a drum violently and then um, that would be for a minute, maybe two minutes, and then drop to my knees and then my left side. And it was always on my left shoulder. and. It got to the stage where my shoulder is now not in very good condition. My rotor cuff is very is permanently damaged. The tendons on my arm are, was three, I think, that are snapped. The rest are stretched, so I'm always going to have pain there. Um, and it's then I frontal temporal lobe dementia is a cruel, cruel disease, Mick, and Yet, you have made the best of it. I mean, in that post, which we'll provide a link to as well, of all the things you have done globally, and now as your message, as this disease continues on, you mentioned earlier, we were just talking shortly ago, that you felt a twig, almost like a dried twig, just break in your brain and lost your ability to speak for 16 hours. And then this has happened to you several times. And in spite of this, you are working on a book. You are writing a book to leave as a legacy for your family. Um, if you could just tell us briefly about that book, uh, that will give us just enough time to just share this quick update of where are they now. Um, we, I decided to write a book, as you say, as a, a legacy. It, it's about me. It's not about um, a, a what I've done and what I haven't done and conquests and all this. It's, it's me from the heart, exactly what's happened to me. Um, it's not, it doesn't flow. It's exactly, it, as, uh, as I think of something, that's what I recall. And um, a lot of it is exactly as I've said it. So it's not going to be, um, I can't think of the word, damn dementia, Robson, <laughs> things like that. Well, um, and I'll wrap this up for us, uh, Mick, again, because we have such short time here. But yeah. I will say, you and I have talked about this earlier. And even though you do have dementia and people will say, well, how can this man write a book? You have dictated it because, as you mentioned, it would take you 50 years to write it. You have dictated mm -hmm. it. And a dear friend has asked a family member who can type very quickly to type it. And this dear friend has actually paid this family member to type it for you. So we look forward to seeing the completion of this book and as a legacy to your family. So this does conclude our Where Are They Now? And Mick, it is such a pleasure to be able to reconnect with you after our initial interview in March of 2017. Thank you, Brenda. It's so lovely to talk to you again. You're such a good friend.